Hello, community. Today we have new research on large generative graph models, LGGM. And you might say, hey, we know this, no? We have the large language model, then we have the vision language model. And then remember, we had this series here on Sora. This was here a text to video AI system and more. And you remember we had our graph neural networks, where I had the knowledge graph, the graph embedding, the link prediction, the node classification and everything. And now this new topic is where? Well, you're not gonna believe it, but this new topic is exactly in between. So we do have large generative models, and now we extend it here to the graph. Now, this particular research I'm going to show you here, the graph was, the system for the graphs was pre-trained on a corpus of 5,000 graphs from 13 distinct domains. Now what you can do, you can find you now this large generative graph model and we have now finally, after a text to image, text to video, now we have a text to graph generation. Isn't that fantastic? So here you have it. Starting here from a large language model, a vision language model, and a vision language action model, we have now here to jump over to the pure graph neural network with message passing and topological analysis. We have now here the large generative graph models that we can pre that are now pre-trained on a corpus of 5,000 graphs, fine-tuned, and text to generation. So now you know exactly where the topic lives. Let's have a look at the methodology that they used. Well, the pre-training paradigm was simple. They're unlike traditional graph generative models. They trained it now on a diverse set of graphs from multiple domains. And I think this is the most important thing for you to remember. Now we have multiple domain training pre-training. Now, if we then come here to the technology that they applied, you know this. This is some discrete denoising diffusion process, which involves a forward process of adding noise to graphs and a reverse process of denoising them to generate new graphs. And you know exactly what this is because we have done it in the past already with images. The new feature now of LGGM is that user can specify graph properties in their text prompt such as the average degree you want the graph to have with a clustering coefficient CC through text prompts that guide now the generation process here of our graph. Now, if you're not really sure, there are some videos I would recommend to you where I show you the technical insight here into before the diffusion, we had variational autoencoder and then here stable diffusion, the complete code, variational autoencoder, UNET and CLIP. And then we go to Latin diffusion model here, LoRa SDXL. So we are familiar with this. If you want to see the pure code, you can have it here in TensorFlow. In Keras layers where we code autoencoder, I show you here how to understand vector quantized variational autoencoders and the latest in diffusion transformer technology. So the methodology is known. What is now specific, and the author stressed this, and now the old times there was only one domain each time one graph was trained, and now they have finally multi-domain training. Isn't that beautiful? So now here I can introduce you to, to the publication, June 7, 2024, Large Graph Generative Models, and we have Vanderbilt University, University of Michigan, our, ah, our lovely Adobe, now isn't that great, and Intel. You remember Adobe where with Firefly, we had the terms that you had to agree to if you want to enter now your Adobe, where you pay to Adobe that you use their products. There were some interesting new terms, but never mind. So those are the researcher from those companies and those universities. And they tell us here, yes, large generative models such as GPT, Stable Diffusion, and Sora, trained on a huge amount of a language corpus, images, videos, and audios, were extreme diverse from numerous domains, while up until now all the other models have been trained only on one data set at a time. And now, to remedy this crucial gap, now this researcher proposed a new class of graph generative models. And you're not going to believe it, they call it LGGM. Great. Now, if you compare it here with the 
other models that we have in the other training data sets I will show you. You see here the number of domains was rather limited. So it was not just on one, but a limited domain cross-section. And now with this new one, we have 13 different domains. So the multi-domain training now, according here to our beloved Adobe, sets in here with their model and the text to graph is now also possible. Beautiful. If you want to see here in particular the 5000 graphs on the 13, 13 domains, here you have the medium number of nodes, the number of edges here, and all the characteristic of those networks. So we go here with Facebook, Animal Society, Email, Web, Road, Power, Chemical, Biological, Economic, Retreat Data, Collaboration Data, Ecological Data, and Citation Data. Absolutely fantastic. And now they say, yeah, if you compare now our model here, or the digress model here with our new model, we are, of course, as you can see in bold, are here the outperformer, the number one performance. We outperform here the other system. If we have here unseen graphs and held out domain X, and you can see our model is so much better. Beautiful. Now, if you are not familiar with the Approbation here used, you have the distribution of degree, you have the clustering coefficient, you have the eigenvalues of the normalized Laplacian matrix and some other simple parameters that define your graph. So now you might ask, okay, and the other kind of interface that it touches here with the graph neural network, what exactly is the difference between those two bodies? No? So let's have a look in a little bit more detail. Do you remember message passing in graph neural network was to learn the node embedding by aggregating information from a node's neighbor. And this approach is used to perform tasks such as node classification, link prediction, and graph classification, the typical three. And the pure focus here of GNN was to encode the graph structure and the node feature into a lower dimensional phase for faster mathematical computation that captures the essential patterns and the relationships within the graph. Now, with LGGMs, it's a little bit different because what we do is now we generate new graph structures with our given commands that are realistic and adhere to certain properties. And the focus is on the generation of graph structures potentially based on user-defined criteria. We just went through this, the message passing here, the equation, the typical equation here, and the typical equation here for the LGGMs. And then the application, you see it's here, typical, the node level task, the edge level task, and the complete graph level task, like graph classification. And with LGGMs, we have a little bit of different, and I will show you here in a second here, the industrial applications, but what we do, we generate graphs with specific property as defined here by the user prompts, including text description. And therefore we have data augmentation now by generating additional graph or maybe just subgraph for training other models. Main difference if you want, with one we generate the graphs and with the other we generate here optimized graphs and they work hand in hand. GNN methods to generate that graph. It's of course beautiful if you use now the message passing that on the new graphs that we are generated here with LGGM. We have now the methods and the methodologies like message passing algorithm that we can apply now to this new formed graph. And then we can work with those new synthetic graph structure by text to graph now and continue with the task that we know. What's nice, LGGM can generate molecular graphs with specific properties. You have the application in social network analysis, in material design, and of course, real strong one in cybersecurity. Beautiful. Now, have a look at the code. This here is here the GitHub library. And if you play around with the code, uh, with the code a little bit, I noticed, well, yes, this is what I would call here a very nice publication, but of course it does not show us the real potential what is developed here. You just have a kind of a sandbox with the code. Get familiar yourself and see what you can do. 
but I think we are just at the beginning here for large graph generative models here. And of course, personal reflection at the end of this video. So we have Adobe and Intel here collaborating here on this particular topic. And if you read the study, you would say, there's not much meat on the bone. Yeah. This is a nice little study, but I think it was downplayed here on purpose to not give us any ideas. But hey, if we should have some ideas, imagine. You would have, for example, a biological network or an, some other silicon-based network where you know the properties of those networks. And then you have now the possibility to design graphs, to design specific graphs with verbal commands. So isn't this nice here to have now this option? For example, if you want to design here a specific graph that interconnects between different systems or different subsystems, that you can do this now with a human narrative. So I think very early time here in the development phase for here those application, but it is nice that we have now this text to graph of 5000 graph that it was here pre-trained on enough. No, in no way is this enough for even specific task. But as I showed you, this is only here. A very tiny fraction was shown of what is possible with this new technology. But I think it is interesting that we know how they implement this, the technology, the application that they can use it. And maybe you get an idea how this will lead us here into the future. I hope it was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. And it would be great to see you in my next video.